back in the classroom that isn't set up for discussions. Okay, so we're going to do more trig integrals today. Yay! Uh-huh, I sense your excitement. Okay. Oh, goody, this one's got a root in it, yes. Okay, so... This is 7 day to 7 dash 2 day to the end of the packet that I gave you. No, I get it. Okay. No. All right, so... This one is a tad different than the ones we've had before because it's got a root sign, but that doesn't really change anything all that much. So any ideas? Your idea with trig functions, your options are use um, a Pythagorean identity or use the half angle identities. What do you think this one is? Pythagorean. Probably Pythagorean because, and the hint is, is that the Pythagoreans will work when the cosine or sine's power is odd. So, and that's because you can then pull off one of them and then you can make the rest of them into the other one using the Pythagorean entities. So start by breaking this into root sine x, cosine squared x times cosine x. You're saving the cosine x dx to be your du in your substitution. What does cosine squared get replaced by? One minus sine squared. So sine x, one minus sine squared x, cosine x dx. Okay. So what are we going to substitute for now? U is, u is sine x, very good. And then du is, derivative of sine is cosine. So this becomes integral root u, one minus u squared du. Okay, that was definitely not what I meant to do. Shoot. Okay. All right. Now what next? This true. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be really careful. I had students who said u to the one half minus u. What did they assume? They thought root, is root u times u squared really u? No. 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 What happens to um, exponents when you have common bases? Yeah. They add. So what's a half plus two? Five halves. I was going to say two and a half, but I remember the mixed, mixed numbers were the devil. Mixed numbers are the devil, yep, exactly. In this class, improper fractions all the way. So antiderivative of u to the one half is u to the three halves, two thirds. And you could, of course, plug u back in right away. Minus u to the seven halves coefficient, two sevenths and then plus C. And you can write this with powers of three halves like that. You could also write this as two thirds root sine cubed x minus two sevenths root sine to the seventh x. I can't be picky about formatting unless I sort of specify what format you're supposed to be in, but that's the same thing. Does that make sense? Why? Okay. Remember that the denominator is a type of root and the numerator is a regular power. But it'd be okay if you also just put seven halves instead of seven. That'd be fine as well. As long as you didn't also put the root symbol? Yes, exactly. Yep. Yep. You'd have to either do the root symbol or seven halves. And also, tell me, is it clear that this would be okay? but this is not? Because the second one is the x that's to the three halves, right? So just yeah. be careful that you're, you're, be careful with parentheses. Yes? Okay, so on like a web assign, do you have to put the parentheses around the entire thing, or can you just do sine to the three halves of it? I'm afraid I actually don't know. I, I think, you, I think, you, I think you, you can do sine to the three halves in the next, can't yeah. you? I think you can. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. Yeah. It's like if you type in sign that automatically makes parentheses, but then you just back, uh, then you just.
just press back. And then you can go, go up. Space, yeah. mm -hmm. If you didn't, you'd have to put parentheses in. Okay. Cosine to the fourth. So can you use the Pythagorean for this, or do you have to use the other ones? Uh, the other ones. The other ones. So the first step, I would say, is to write it as cosine squared squared. Is a random what? There's another X in the main problem. No, I don't think there is. Oh, they didn't put the parentheses, so I was confused. Okay, my bad. Okay. So what is cosine squared X equal to? Half. 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 One plus two X. Mm -hmm. Half, one plus cosine of two X. And that whole thing is squared. So the half squared makes a quarter. I'm gonna pull it out of the integral. What does the 1 plus cosine of 2x become when it's squared? 1 plus 2 cosine 2x, very good, plus plus cosine squared 2x, great. It is useful if you can do things like square binomials quickly. Okay, and first term good, second term good, third term repeat, right? Okay. So we'll have one quarter integral one plus two cosine of two x plus a half times one plus cosine four x. Remember you with these, you double the original angle, right? So since the original angle was 2x, double it, you get 4x. Okay. And before we anti-differentiate, let's distribute the 1 half and combine like terms. So doing so, we have 1 quarter out in front, integral, how much constant? Three halves. I think you. I think you meant three halves. Uh, or one point five. Yep. Plus two cosine two x. Plus what's the last term? Cosine four x. Uh huh. Great. Or one half cosine four x. Same thing. Um, if you can skip, if you're like you know good at mathing in your head, and if you like you know can both change cosine squared 2x and combine like terms in the same step, I don't care. I just don't want to do it in class. I don't want to confuse anybody as to where the three halves came from. Okay, and then you're good to integrate. So what's the antiderivative of three halves? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, cosine 2x's antiderivative would be... Technically be... Yep. Yeah. It'd be 2 over 2 sine of 2x. What happens to those 2s? They cancel, obviously, so if you can do that. You... Nope, you're thinking to differentiation. Yep, I know. And then this would be a half times a fourth, which would be 1 eighth. Yep, sine of 4x. So you should, like, you know, on your homework, write 1 eighth and write 1, of course. It's just that because I've been having trouble getting through everything. I'm not going to take the time to do that right this instant. So shouldn't one of those be negative? Nope. Because you're anti-differentiating, which means the derivative of your answer gives you back what you had inside the integral. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of sine is cosine. Had, this, had one of them been a sine, then one of them would have been. Okay. Right? You're, mix, you're both mixing up differentiation and anti-differentiation. It's a really common thing. So do you see a pattern with the sines and cosines? As in, like, when do you try to use Pythagorean and when do you have to use this one? Evens and odds. Evens and odds, right? You see that if you have somebody that has an odd power, then you can use Pythagorean identities because you can take off one, the range is even, right? Because you could theoretically do cosine of x to the sixth, cosine, x, cosine of the sixth of x, right? Because you could do you know, squared, 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 right? It'd be awful and tedious and really kind of painful, but you could do it that way. Okay. So, of course, this pattern means that there's some trick that makes the whole thing a lot easier, right? No, there, that was just pointing out the pattern. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry. The pattern's a teensy bit different with secants and tangents. So how do you know 
that the u sub tangent will work. Your du is going to be secant squared theta. So what, what kind of power has to be on secant squared for this to go through? Even. Has to be even. If it was an odd power, you'd save two of them and then have an odd number left. And then you couldn't change them using the Pythagorean entities anymore. Okay? So let's break that into integral of secant squared theta, secant squared theta, d theta, over root tan theta. Okay, and then let's read it. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. What's the identity involving secant squared? Tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. Is there a problem like this on your homework or take-home quiz? Completely possibly. Yes. So you're going to change one of those secant squareds into tangent squared theta plus 1. And save another one of the secant squareds to be your du. How did I get from the identity that I have first to the second one? What did I divide by? Cosine. Cosine squared. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Okay. So this becomes the integral of u squared plus 1 over root u du. Can you break that apart into two fractions? You can, as per, you can break it apart into two fractions. Do you see what he means by that? So what I mean by that is it's u squared over root u and 1 over root u. You kind of like uncombine the common denominator. What happens to the exponents now? Subtract. When you divide, they subtract, exactly. So what's 2 minus a half? One, One and a half, which is? Three, three, three halves, good. And the other term is rewritten as u to the minus 1 half. What if you did this? What if you did u squared plus 1 u to the negative 1 half du? What would you, and then you just distributed. What happens to the exponents in that case? You add them, but adding 2 plus negative 1 half still gives you 3 halves, right? Sometimes just seeing students get to that step, and then they're stuck. They don't have to do next. Multiply common bases, exponents add, right? Divide common bases, exponents subtract. But they're equivalent. They're both right. Okay, let's anti-differentiate u to the 3 halves is u to the 5 halves with 2 fifths. I'm going to put tangent in right away. So 2 fifths tan 5 halves theta. How about antiderivative of u to the 1 half? <coughs> Good. 2 u to the 1 half. So 2, can I just say root tan theta then? Because it's tan theta. If you said 1 half power, I'm not going to like punish you for that. Will for that? I don't know. Some people are picky about things. I, I speak only for myself. I won't get frustrated. Yes? No, definitely not, because when you add 1 to negative 1 half, you get positive 1 half. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, one more thing I was going to say. Oh, and WebAssign, make sure you use the same variable. I had the first question this semester as to why my answer is wrong and the person had used x's instead of thetas. It's going to happen everybody at some point in time. So just make sure if you get it wrong, first thing to check is use the same variable. I'm not, it happens to everybody. So, okay. So I've mentioned that there are some problems that can be completed more than one way, right? And this is one of those examples. So I think we mentioned that if the power on the secant is even, you can use the Pythagorean stuff for it, right? So we're going to do this one two ways. We're going to let u equal tan and u equal secant. So u is tan. Du is, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Let's fix that or slide there. There must be a way to, like, just reset it, but I don't know it. This makes for a better recording. Yeah, it just makes it more fun and exciting. You guys have to go watch the videos now. <laughs> okay, so just for this, u is tangent, and du is going to be... 
secant squared x. Okay. No idea. I have no idea. So tangent, they'll think we're awesome. The fifth x, secant to the fourth x, secant squared x dx. Okay. So this secant squared is saved to be du. How do you change the secant to the fourth? Secant squared squared. So you don't have to write this step. I'm just going to do it to make sure you all understand. Secant squared x squared. Very good. Okay, and secant squared is um, tangent squared plus one, right? Okay. Alrighty, and now we substitute, and we have the integral of u to the fifth times u squared plus one squared du. It's gonna get. It's not gonna be so bad. It's gonna be kind of big. So first, you should expand. So u to the fifth, what does the um, u squared plus one expand into? U to the plus oh, oh, you did you did one more step than me, okay? So u to the fourth. Uh huh. Plus two u squared plus one. So I think you just listed it in the opposite order, but same thing, right? And I think you were one step ahead and you had distributed, right? So once you distribute, you get u to the ninth plus two u to the uh huh plus u to the fifth. And then one more thing just to point out, what is the reason that you have to square before you multiply by u to the fifth? It's actually pre-algebra. No, it's, it's what well, chemdas, what are operations? Yeah. Exponents happen before multiplying, right? Mm -hmm. So the exponent happens for the multiplication. It's the same stuff you've learned, and that's to keep things consistent. As in so math doesn't break. So what's the antiderivative of u to the ninth? One tenth u to the tenth, so we'll say one tenth uh, tan to the tenth. Uh, this will be next one's gonna be two eighths, right? So one quarter tan to the eighth x plus a sixth tan to the sixth x plus c. <laughs> yeah, it's just not Algebra 2 anymore. <laughs> and it's just kind of what happens. Um, you can, if you want to like, go be a high school teacher, you can go do that for the rest of your life. Yeah, <laughs> well, if you want to be an engineer, no, of course not. Life is not that simple. You were misled. I remember once being told the order of operations existed so that uh, uh, people wouldn't have to write so... Uh, so many parentheses. No, I think it has probably something to do with well-definedness, which means that you keep certain operations because there's things that are there's inconsistencies that are introduced if you don't go in that particular order. As in, like you get like seven equals two stuff like that can happen. So that's the reason. I, I don't have a really really great explanation because I haven't thought about it very very carefully, but that, that's something to that effect. Because if you didn't have an order but you just had a bunch of parentheses all over the place, you, you, could, you could get things done in the correct order. Probably. There could be some such a system. Yeah. 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 So if yeah. u is secant, what's du going to be in this case? Yeah. Secant x tan x. Okay. So that means we have to save a secant and save a tangent. Okay. So breaking it into tan to the fourth x, secant to the fifth x, secant x, tan x, dx. Is everyone okay with that that's what has to be done if this is a substitution? Okay. And now, your goal, the thing you have to do to continue this on this path, 
is you've got to make your tangents in the secants, right? And because the power and tangent is even, that can be done, right? Okay. So that's the same thing as tangent squared squared. And um, what's tan squared equal to? Using the fact that I think it's tan <coughs> squared theta plus 1 is secant squared theta. So in this case, it would be secant <coughs> squared x minus 1, OK? A lot of these problems become quite simple once you find the right substitution, don't they? Yeah. Okay, so that's integral u squared minus 1 squared u to the fifth du, I believe. That's what my notes say. You buy it? You buy it? Okay. Um, it's very close. Notice the other one was u squared plus 1 squared. This one's u squared minus 1 squared, right? But it is awfully similar. You're totally correct. So that's u to the fourth minus 2u squared plus 1 times u to the fifth. I think that works. What do you mean you don't think that works? Of course it works. No. I'm, I'm talking about uh, when you FOIL the squared minus the squared, don't you get, like, canceling out the middle term? Nope. No, that's only if you get u squared minus 1 times u squared plus 1. Thank so you. If you just think about it as u minus 1 times u minus 1 and just do distribution, it's pretty obvious that no, that does not happen. But what you're thinking of is the difference of squares. You're thinking of u minus 1 times u plus 1. That, in that case, yes. But that's not, not squared anymore. <laughs> okay, so antiderivative here is 1 tenth. Now it's secant to the tenth uh, minus an eighth secant to the eighth x plus, oh, minus a fourth. Thank you, thank you. I almost caught my own error for you, but you beat me to it. I was testing you, and you passed. One sixth secant to the sixth. And you're like, does that go on my grade? Come on. So this is a, here's a sort of kind of funny-ish story. I once gave a test and didn't realize that one of the questions I gave on that test was one that could be done either way. So like I graded through the test and then I got somebody I'm like, oh my gosh, they must be wrong. Why'd they do this? And I followed their work. I'm like, oh crap. I made a question for which there are two ways to do it. Now I must check both answers. So, okay. But the point is, is that they're both correct. Web of should take both. And the way you'd prove they were the same is you could use these Pythagorean entities to change the tangents into secants. You don't have to do that, okay? Because you're probably going to make a mistake on the way because it's just too tedious, but it's possible. Okay. So you're going to make us do more math where you figure out both of these and set them equal to each other and the... No, because it's not the point. Okay, this one. So do we know of any pattern that puts cotangent and sine together thus far? Change it to sines and cosines. Change it to Change it to sines and cosines. If you ever are in, like, you know, dire straits, that's your fallback method. Make it all sines and cosines, right? So cotangent, cotangent is equal to... Cosine is ethics over sine is Mm-hmm. And then time sine to the fourth x, right? Nice. Oh, and stuff can cancel, right? Mm -hmm. what, what cancels? What do we got once stuff is canceled? The sine x is canceled, and so we've got cosine to the fifth x over sine x. Sine x. Great. And that sine x is in the denominator, so it cannot be your du. Shadfish. <coughs> so, okay. Make u plus sine. I mean, yeah, make u, u is going to be sine. Yep, that's going to be your substitution. I thought you said it couldn't. I said it couldn't be your du. Right. Yep, yep. At least I'm pretty sure that's what I said, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. That's what you said. Okay. So you don't want to turn the sine into a cosecant. Probably, you, you know, it might work out that way, as in it's completely possible, okay? But I find this easier, but I think that will work. Yeah, that, actually, that'll work quite well. Yeah, that'd be fine. 
So this is going to be cosine to the fourth x times cosine x dx over sine x. Okay, and then what's that cosine of the fourth going to change into? Cosine squared, squared squared. So can I jump straight to 1 minus sine squared x squared? Is that okay? Occasionally you want to be lazy too, right? For once in a while? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Then make it into u's. 1 minus u squared squared over u du. So what do you get when you square? Uh-huh, u to the fourth minus 2u squared plus 1. Does it matter that the order was changed a teensy bit? Everybody else? No. Okay. Okay, now when you divide everybody by u, so really what this big fraction bar is, is kind of like a big parenthesis. It says... Everybody in the top gets divided by u, so u to the fourth divided by u is? Uh-huh. U to the third power now. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sorry. Okay. Minus 2u, right? And the last term is u to the negative 1, or 1 over u. So I'll write it as u to the negative 1. We'll talk about what the antiderivative of that is. It is natural log of u. It is not zero. We'll talk about why. It's good. You, it's, I thought that mistake might happen. Antiderivative of u to the third is one quarter u to the fourth, right? Uh, minus just u squared because the two and the one half would cancel, yes? Does the reverse power rule apply to u to the negative one? No. You would get u to the zero over zero. And division by zero is like, you know, breaking the first payment of math. Thou shalt not divide by zero. There's a special formula for the integral of 1 over u, and somebody said it. It's mm -hmm, technically natural log, and it must be absolute valued because the function 1 over u has both a positive half and a negative 1 half, and you can't put negatives into logs. That's commandment number 3, thou shalt not log negatives or zero. What do you think number 2 is? I made these commandments up, okay, but I think they're mine. Mm -hmm. that, number 2 is uh, don't take the square root of negative 1. Of just negatives in general, <laughs> you know, so which implicitly implies negative one. Okay, so we have one quarter. What was the substitution? I forgot. Sine? Sine, sine to the fourth x minus sine squared x. Has anybody else, else ever, math, ever had math commandments in your classes other than me? Okay, I should patent that. Okay. Here we go. Awesome. All righty. Are we good? Yes. I, I mean, they, I should preface my commandments by in the real number system. Okay. So, shh, here, you got 2 plus sine x over cosine. So what we're going to kind of do here is we're going to explain why those formulas from yesterday actually um, work. The ones at the very end that I didn't quite get to. So this is the same thing as 2 over cosine x plus sine x over cosine x. Yes, right? Which is the same thing as the integral of 2 secant of x plus tangent of x dx, right? Uh, so I did there. And I'm pretty sure I told you yesterday that you could, if you ran across these in your homework, just use these formulas. The antiderivative is of secant is ln absolute value secant x plus tan x. And the antiderivative of tangent is negative natural log absolute value cosine x. No, no, you're not. Nope. 
Um, I'm going to show you why they're true, and I think you're going to memorize them kind of by accident because there's going to be a lot of questions in Section 7.3 where that kind of just happens all the time, and you'll memorize them because you're going to see them a lot, okay? Right. But I'm going to tell you why they work, okay? Is there a reason you chose natural log of cosine x instead of natural log of secant x? Nope, and I can also explain why they're the same thing. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay, so the first thing is, is you're kind of like, well, what the heck, how did that come, like, where did that come from, right? Because that's kind of a thing. And the other thing is that example number eight, I actually did in the previous notes. So scribble it out, and we're going to skip it, and we're going to do this other thing instead. Okay, so just go scribble, scribble, scribble. Okay. So here's the whys on those formulas. Let's begin with the easy one. The integral of tangent is actually pretty simple to figure out. That one I could make you do on a, even a calculus one test, actually. Because your fallback method with trig functions is make it into sine over cosine. And then you do a substitution. What do you substitute for? U is cosine x du is negative sine x. Can you kind of see how that one's going to fall out a little bit there? Yeah. That's going to become negative integral 1 over u du. You buy? Mm -hmm. So negative natural log absolute value of cosine plus c. And I think... So is everyone okay with how that worked? That was just basic substitution, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure that in my notes, I claimed that that was the same <coughs> thing as the natural log of um, secant, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Okay, and here's why. Remember that one of the purposes of logs in life is they kind of pull exponents down? Okay, so what it, that means that you can also reverse that and the exponents can go back up, right? So this is the same thing as negative 1 ln absolute value of cosine. And that negative 1 can go back and become a power. ln absolute value cosine x to the power of negative 1. Does that make sense? You've seen that with logs before? And then cosine x all to the negative first really means what? 1 over cosine, which is secant, exactly. So I don't expect you to sort of, anyway, I don't care which one you use, but that's why they're the same. And so if you're like checking your work, your textbook might use this one or it might use that one. That's one way that multiple choice tests can get hard. You're not going to have any in this class, but like if it's multiple choice and they only listed the last one, you've got to know how to take the like, you know, first one to the last one, right? Okay, so that's why that's true. You don't have to reprove it, you can just use it, okay? Why the other one is true is just, it's a clever trick, okay? So we're gonna try to integrate secant of x dx. And I think it's pretty obvious that making it into one over cosine isn't really gonna do anything for you, right? So here's the clever thing you do. You take this secant of x and you multiply by secant x plus tan x over secant x plus tan x. I know, I know, you're like, what the heck? How would you come up with that? But is it like mathematically legitimately okay? It's, yeah, yeah. it's effective, it's one, right? So it's okay. Then you say this is secant squared x plus secant x tan x over secant x plus tan x dx. And now substitution works. Where'd that come from? Yeah, you're good? That came from that, right? I just distributed the secant that was in the numerator, yes? Okay, now if you let u equal the bottom, what's the derivative of secant? Secant tan. What's the derivative of tangent? That's the stuff that happens to be in your numerator. So there you go, that's how you figure it out. You say u is equal to secant x plus tan x, and then du is secant x tan x plus secant squared x. And that is clever. 
because you have to know that I got to multiply by one in this particular form. That's tricky. I only got that because I've like you know taught calculus too for the past like gazillion years in a row, and so I've done this problem every year, sometimes twice a year for the past I don't know seven years of my life. Yeah. I find it interesting that you wouldn't have even had that u if you hadn't put that in there in the first place. And that's the clever thing. Integration <coughs> is not a straightforward thing to do. That's kind of the point. Is it often involves clever things like this. You'd prove the antiderivative of cosecant very much the same way. So. This becomes natural log absolute value u plus c, and you get the formula that I told you that you could use, right? Yeah? Okay. Actually, I think if you look back at your very, very, very first set of notes that we did in the very, very, very first day, one thing we did was we did the derivative of um, ln absolute value secant of 5x plus tangent of 5x, and it worked out to be... 5 secant of 5x. I kind of was hinting at this a little bit. You see what I mean? Like I took the derivative of, of the answer and got back something that was kind of like what was inside the integral. Because they check your work, right? Yeah, I just did those notes too. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. So that's why those formulas work. Cotangent cubed. Mm. The best idea I have is take off a cotangent and change the rest. Does that seem like a reasonable option? Sure. It probably also wor works to somehow revert to sines and cosines. Like that's probably also another method. Okay, that you might get it at the same answer. So, so cotangent squared x cotangent x dx. Okay, so what's cotangent squared equal to? So we know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. To get cotangent, you need cosine over sine, right? So 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x, right? Okay, so that's going to be integral cosecant <coughs> squared x minus 1 times cotangent x. Is that okay? Okay. And, hmm, well... One option if you're at this stage that you can do is it's totally okay to do integrals of sums and differences individually, right? So if I were to take this and write it as cotangent x times cosecant squared x minus the integral of cotangent x dx. Is that okay? All right. So with the first one, you make a substitution, and it's actually a really, really simple one. What's the derivative of cotangent? Cosecant. So if you let u equal cotangent x, du is negative cosecant squared x dx, right? So with that first integral, at least, we have negative integral u du. That's it, right? Bye. Okay. Um, with cotangent, revert to, I'd say cosine over sine. Does that make sense? You buy that? Mm -hmm. The same way we did tangent, right? Yes. Why wouldn't you just uh, solve your du for dx and then substitute in that one? Solve your du for d. Uh, your du has to be like multiplied by everything, not just a portion of the stuff inside of your integral. Like the du was cosecant squared negative, right? You have cosecant squared minus one. Okay, so for that second one, could you make a different substitution to make that one work? What would you do? Let 
let's just use a different letter. Let's let W equal sine. And then DW is cosine. So negative one half u squared minus the integral of one over w dw or negative one half cotangent squared x minus natural log absolute value of sine. And it occurs to me like I had an epiphany just sort of sitting in front of you. Sorry. It might be easier in this case to make these sines and make cotangent cubes into sines over cosines. Like, I haven't worked it out that way, but I, I think it will work. And if I have time at the end, I can go back and do it that way. Because my suspicion is, is you're not as familiar with the derivatives of cosecant and cotangent because they come up less frequently, right? And I kind of wonder if you can always make things sines and cosines and make it all work, and maybe. I don't know. Yes? So I was wondering why you didn't pull off like one cotangent and then split off the other one into sine squared over cosine squared. That might also work. I mean, as in like there's probably more than one way to do this problem. Professor Faudry did it a different way in the notes that she posted. So like it's completely possible that it will work, but I mean that means I'm going to go down like five different paths in class. So, but it, it, you can try it and it might, it might work. Okay. So another thing that can happen, we are at 12.45, right? So I might actually finish in time today. Yeah, woo, first time ever in this class. You might have to combine integration by parts with the other stuff that you know. Does that integration by parts and trig stuff? Does that make sense? Put the techniques together a little bit. So the, what is the hint here that integration by parts is something that might work? The T on the front, because you've got a product of some sorts, right? And then the fact that you've got cosine squared kind of means it might be easier if you did what to it? Use the identities to make it into... Pythagoras makes it squared still. Like, as in you make it into sines and it'd be squared. Use the, half, use the half angles, exactly. So make this into T, or sorry, integral T times a half, 1 plus cosine of 2t dt. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah? All right. And actually, this answers your question. So we have the whole question about, like, what happens with um, coefficients, right, and integrals. The coefficient can just come out in the front. Does that make sense? It can just be factored out. I think constants factor out of differentiation, right? They also factor out of integration. And at the same time, I'm going to distribute that t, okay? This becomes t plus t cosine 2t. Is that all right? Now, there are kind of two problems there. Can you anti-differentiate t? Yes, it's 1 half t squared, right? And then to integrate, to anti-differentiate t cosine 2t, you have to use integration by parts. You do them kind of separately. So keep the 1 half out in front as like, you know, you're going to take care of it in the end. And you'll have 1 half t squared plus integral t cosine 2t. And really, integration by parts doesn't get any more basic than t cosine 2t. That's kind of like the simplest example of integration by parts I can give you. Does that make sense? Maybe t e to the 2t is simpler. OK? How do you know it's How do I know it's addition? Oh, because I, the identity for cosine squared is 1 half 1 plus cosine 2t. It travels down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no reason for it to change, right? Had it originally been sine squared, then it would be one half times the quantity one minus, right? Okay. So what do you let u equal? What do you let dv equal in that integration by parts problem? U is t. U is t. Great. dv is cosine 2t dt. Very good. 
then du is dt, and v is a half sine of 2t. Should it be negative or is it good? It's good. Okay. I mean, of course it's right. I am perfect and always right. No, you, no, that's actually not true, okay? So I don't think it's true. Okay. Plus. And the formula there was what? Uv minus integral V du, right? Okay, so Uv is one-half T sine 2T minus a half integral sine 2T dt. Okay, so you have a half times a half t squared plus a half t sine 2t plus, what's the last, oh, not plus, sorry, I don't think that's, maybe it is plus, I don't know. It actually is, that, but that was not me, that was me making a mistake that came, became, was actually right, not me actually thinking about it. So minus a half times a half cosine 2t, and as cosine's derivative is negative sine, I have to account for that negative there and make it plus. Okay. And then plus c. So your final answer is a quarter t squared plus a quarter t sine 2t plus an eighth cosine 2t plus c. And I'm pretty sure that there's a homework problem just like this on one of the assignments that concerns 7-2. Because I think I was, this time I made two assignments for 7-2, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Often when we spend two days going over a section, I'll just have one homework for it, and you'll kind of have a little bit of a homework lull. Does that make sense? Okay. Is there a homework tonight? Say that again? There's a homework due tonight. It's 7-2 part one. But the due dates are all in WebAssign. Today's homework, so today's Friday. The next class day is Tuesday. Not due till Tuesday at midnight. Which also means you can get a great head start and get it done. Because you have weekend. You break it? Yeah? Uh huh. Nope. They're just things that you could do if you want to study more. Like I picked them out specially for you. Hint, 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 wink, wink, wink. Once I took one of those problems and put it on a final and like almost nobody got it and I was pissed. Because it was like a special review at the end of the chapter and I put it on and like, oh my God, how do I do that? I'm like, yeah, it was a problem I told you you should do to practice and they chose not to do it and I was, so don't let that be you. Yes? Um, so I think on web assignment it says the homework's due tonight at 11. There are two assignments for section 7-2. And since we had a 7-2 lesson yesterday, that one is due tonight. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's one more that covers some more complicated examples, like from today. That's due on Tuesday. Okay, awesome. Questions? So this one, a Professor Faudry did really quickly. And for me, I, I just it, it makes it easier for my brain if I make a couple substitutions, like as in do two of them. What would your first substitution be? X, I would just say X squared, is that okay? Yeah. You can actually, if you're faster, you could do it in one substitution, but just for me, that's easiest. I'm gonna let U equal X squared. Then DU is 2X DX. So this becomes a half integral secant squared U tan to the fourth U DU. That all right? Okay. And now, can you do another substitution, or do you have to fuss with anything? You can just make tan yep. And let's let since we already have it being tangent of u, let's make it w. Did you guys watch Arthur when you were kids too? <laughs> DW is. Is the show still running? Probably with different actors, just like The Simpsons is still running. I think. Yeah, which has been running for ages. Yeah, Simpsons is actually full of math nerds. 
This is U, I think just U to the fourth, W to the fourth, excuse me, W to the fourth DW. Right? That's just, it's that simple. By the way, somebody figured out that the, the, spring, the, the Simpsons Springfield was actually in, um, in Oregon. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. So the integer of W to the fourth is one fifth W to the fifth. So that's one tenth tangent to the fifth of U. And what's the last thing you got to do? Back substitute the x squared. If you wanted to do it faster, you could have let u equal tangent of x squared, like that whole thing. What would du be in that case? Secant squared of x squared times 2x dx. And you see how this x is accounted for? And then it ends up being the integral of u to the fourth over to du, right? And it's the exact same thing. So that's how Professor Fodry did it. She was just faster than I was. I just, for some reason, read two substitutions made more sense. So, can this line? Okay, now let me squash a common boo-boo, like, and I want to never, ever, ever see it again, ever, in this class. Okay, so is it okay, one plus x squared rooted is root one plus root x squared? Never, okay? God, never, ever. I've got this great poster in my office that says whenever you, whenever you do this, a kitten dies. That's a kitten killing algebra mistake, okay? Don't do that. Kittens die because you make this mistake. And there's reasons why that mistake is wrong. I can show you, or here's one, and then we'll move on and not discuss it much more. So take root 25. You know that's five, right? Like that's something you get. That's the same thing as 16 plus nine, yeah? Okay, and you're like, okay, I think that's root 16 plus root 9. Oh, 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 oh. 4 plus 3, and all of a sudden 5 is 7. And I mean, I'd like that to happen to my money. Like, I'd like 5 to become 7. <laughs> but it just doesn't work like that. And that's why there is our operations. Like, that really is an operation thing, right? Okay. So roots or actually powers because like if you do one plus x squared i'm pretty sure that you guys all thought oh that must be one squared plus x or at least the first time you saw that it's a really common thing to think right but then you are you're told that then you discovered that no it really is one plus two x plus x squared because you say oh that's one plus x times one plus x right and so powers unless they're a power of one and probably a power of zero no other powers distribute <laughs> okay so just Sorry, over, over addition, that is. Like if the operation middle is addition. So my point with that one was that, um, no, I can't, I've got, no, I've got like messy stuff, whatever, okay. Go away, go away, there we go. Okay, so now it's gone, ish, close enough. The point is, is you can't root one, you can't root cosine two x, right? So that's not an option. So, mm -hmm. but you have an identity that involves one plus cosine two x, right, somehow? It's like cosine squared x is equal to one half one plus cosine of two x. No, this is definitely plus. If it's, the, if it's cosine to cosine, it's plus. It's all good, yep. How I remember it is that cosine to cosine stays plus. Okay, so then what is one plus cosine of two x equal to? Mm -hmm. Equals one plus cosine of two x. Oh yeah. No, it's just it's just not stupid. It's ridiculously <laughs> clever, and just because I had to explain it to you doesn't mean it's not like. Okay, I think stupid's a bit strong. Stupid that that works. <laughs> Equals works in both lots, I mean, both ways. You can mess with it. And so is that helpful? Yes. Yeah, and now you can root without killing any kittens, yes? So you have... I like kittens. I do not condone any kitten killing, okay? So root 2 times just cosine x. I don't know, killing kittens is 
Golden Kitten seems like a, a, a excessive... No, no, no. Okay, what's the antidote of cosine? Sine. Sine. The cobwebs have been dusted off and you're now integrating accurately. Yay. Okay, and then you plug in pi quarters. Now, with trig functions, the easiest angles are the whole multiples of 90, right? What's the next easiest one? I don't think so. I think quarters. Yeah, because there, there's some permutation of plus, plus or minus root 2 over 2, right? Did we get the quadrant correct? So what is the sine of pi quarters? Root 2 over 2, yep. So I think that's actually 1. Awesome. Well...